going forward. Um, Fred Wilson coming to speak. Um, Fred is going to tell you a little bit about him, and I think we have some interesting stuff to discuss, but in order for this to be a really interesting conversation, as always, he's going to rely on you to make sure that you guys are asking questions. Uh, so without further ado, Fred. Thank you. So I'm not going to sit at the podium. Uh, this is a small enough group. I think we should just make this informal. And I am planning on talking for maybe 15 or 20 minutes and then um, trying to get this interactive as much as we possibly can uh, for the rest of the time. And then uh, I think last year uh, was this group. Uh, some of us, or maybe all of us, went out and did beer afterwards. So I'm happy to do that if anybody wants to do That's that. Um, yeah. Did we do that last year? Yeah, we did. <laughs> okay. um, so anyway, I, that, I thought that was fun, and hopefully uh, we can. If we're going to make this an annual event, then uh, then we have to do that also. Annually. Consider and, it done. And uh, I also appreciate everybody for doing this uh, down here at NYU. Um, I I have an aversion to Midtown uh, law firm conference rooms, which is where I guess um, these things normally happen. And I understand that the people from Columbia had to come extra far for this, and I appreciate you doing that as well. So I thought maybe what I would do is talk a little bit about uh, the the early years uh, in my career in the venture capital business. Um, I think we were talking a little bit about some of this um, before we got going, and uh, it's a it's a story that I don't I don't tell very often actually, and, uh, and I think it's there's some interesting lessons um, in it. So I. Um, I had an engineering degree from MIT in the early 80s, and uh, most of my friends, when we, when we graduated from MIT, went into the technology business, software companies, hardware companies, uh, uh, semiconductor companies, so on and so forth. And um, it was through their uh, experiences that I really got a sense of how, how big the you know, burgeoning computer industry was and how vibrant it was, and you know, I remember having friends who actually, um, you know, were working 10, 20 hours a week, junior, senior year in college for software companies, and you know, I remember one software company um, in Kendall Square in, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, that had a was in an old firehouse and they had a fire pole, and you know, the 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 software programmers would you know go up and down you know on this. Uh, Fire pole, and it was just a, it was sort of a crazy, you know, energetic experience um, that that my friends were having, um, and I thought I wanted to get connected to this world of startups, but I also um, felt like I didn't really want to be an engineer uh, in my career, and so I started thinking about the investment business. I moved to New York in 1983, and started knocking on the doors of uh, venture capital firms, and I quickly found out that um, every venture capital firm I talked to uh, required an MBA. So I decided to go get an MBA and did that in um, 85 and 86. And the summer between my uh, first and second year of business school, I talked my way into a summer associate job at a small firm. Uh, here in New York City called Euclid Partners that had been started in 1971 by two guys, Milt Pappas and Bliss McCrum, and they basically ran the firm from 1971 till really today. The firm's still in existence, uh, although Bliss is retired now probably uh, seven, eight years ago. I think Milt's still involved, um, but sort of as a senior partner in the firm. and. At the time, they had been, uh, so I joined them in, I guess, 1986, and they had been in the business for 15 years by the time I joined them, and they had actually started Euclid Partners, you know, fairly late in their careers. Uh, I guess, uh, Milt, in 1971, born in 28, so, so he was, uh, he was in his mid-40s. Uh, when he started uh, Euclid Partners and Bliss was around the same age. So, you know, by the time I joined them, they were getting close to 60 years old. So it was kind of a funny experience for me, you know, a 25-year-old kid 
going to work with a couple of guys who were, um, you know, fairly on in their careers. Uh, and it, but it was a good match in some ways because I was really quite plugged into the computer business. Uh, I wrote software and, and understand the whole personal computer phenomenon. And uh, I was able to inject a lot of that into their business. And uh, we did a bunch of investing in um, PC-based software, PC-based hardware. Uh, networking started to happen, so we did a bunch of investing in networking. And they, they taught me the business. And it was really an apprenticeship in many ways, the way I think about the time I spent there. Uh, in, in, the, in the very classic sense, I, I worked there for six years before I, quote unquote, did a deal. And I, six years before they had enough confidence in me to allow me to actually invest the firm's capital in something. So I spent six years basically carrying their bags, as the saying went. And I didn't actually carry their bags, but that was what people always said. Um, to board meetings, and I and they took me to a lot of board meetings, and I watched a lot of stuff happen, and opened my eyes to what you know really goes on in the venture business. Another thing that was interesting, when I joined them in '86, um, there had been this big boom uh, from sort of '83 to '85 um, in uh, the personal computer business, as Apple and IBM started to really launch their PC businesses. And uh, one example of that was this massive boom in disk drive companies. And uh, I think the uh, number was like over 100 disk drive companies got, got created between 1982 and 1984. But by 1986, um, the market was in shakeout. And lots of the companies that had gotten financed in 83 and 84 um, were in a world of hurt. Um, and we had a bunch of those in our portfolio. So the very first thing that I did uh, when I got in the venture business is work with the partners on the really troubled companies. One of the sad things about the venture business, um, sad is the right word, one of the uh, unwritten things about the venture business is that you end up spending vastly more of your time on the companies that don't work than the companies that do work. So there's this huge mismatch between uh, where the returns come from and where you actually invest your time. And so we were investing a lot of time in these companies that were messed up, many of which ended up going out of business. So I did uh, restructurings, headcount reductions, um, helped negotiate out of leases, um, a couple bankruptcies, many bridge loans. And that was my first introduction to the venture business. And I think it was very good for me personally to learn the business uh, from the bad side first, um, because I still to this day uh, carry a lot of, um, how would I say, uh, uh, I, I, I know what happens when things go bad, and uh, I learned a lot of lessons early on in my career about um, how to manage through those situations, and uh, so one, I, I don't want to find myself in those situations. And number two, when I do find myself in the, those situations, I've got a pretty good sense of how to, how to navigate through that. And also, I think that it, it sort of took a lot of the glamour out of the venture business, out of the equation for me early on, and I realized what a hard business it was. In fact, you know, Euclid Partners, for a firm that's been around uh, for uh, 30, Eight years, is that right? Thirty-eight years. Um, you know, not you know, not the biggest name in the venture business, and and part of that is that um, although when I was there and even before I was there, we had our share of winners. You know, we we never made it big. Um, the